We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Welcome everybody to the session uh, called Youth in IG Policy Making Process. Let's talk about MHLB. Uh, my name is Emilia Zalewska and I am from Poland, uh, representing the Youth IGF Poland. So firstly, I would like to shortly introduce uh, you our four speakers for today's se session. So first, it's Juan Pajaro Valesquez, who has a Bachelor in Communication Studies at the University of Cartagena and a um, uh, Master's uh, in Cultural Studies at the National Un University of Rosario. Their main research focus has been LGBTQI issues and queer representation in media. In the last couple of years, they started to focus on gender diverse representation online, internet governance, and also on topics related to artificial intelligence, ethics, and social computing as independent researcher. The second speaker, uh, speaker is me, Emilia Zalewska, and I am a lawyer. I am involved in the internet governance for five years. Uh, I am the steering committee member and co-founder of the Youth IG of Poland. And also this year, uh, I took part in preparing the Youth Summit as the Project Youth Summit organization. So uh, the next uh, speaker is Bruna Santos. Uh, she is a visiting researcher at the Wissenschaftszentrum uh, Berlin for Social Forschung and re recipient of German Chancellor Fellowship for Future Leaders of the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. Bruna graduated from Centro Universitario de Brasilia with a Bachelor of Laws and brings along uh, experience as a specialist consultant in data protection, global internet governance, and content governance. She actively participated in the discussions that led to the approval the Brazilian Civil Rights Framework for the Internet and the Brazilian Personal Data. I'm sorry, I have like the text is disappearing. <laughs> the, for the best part. So this is Bruna. <laughs> And uh, also, uh, our uh, on online moderator is Joao Moreno Falcao, who are here with us in the room and just got promoted. Okay, so uh, firstly, uh, I would like to give the floor to our panelists. So firstly, uh, there will be uh, Bruna, then there will be uh, there will be Juan, then Aileen, and the last speaker will be me. So, uh, so Bruna, please, uh, if you could, uh, if you could uh, tell us more about what are your thoughts on the MHLB and the different viewpoints we heard on the last weeks, like what are the objectives and challenges. Hi, everyone, and thank you all so much for the invitation. Well, um, just going a little bit through um, what is the multi-stakeholder high-level body or what should be the multi-stakeholder high-level body. In the past few years, we have seen um, some increased attention from the UN Secretary General to digital-related themes. So we have had, um, in 2018, a high level, um, hi very high level discussions in a, in a group try that was assembled in order to discuss what digital cooperation was, how could we develop in um, like a common strategy for the world and, and for the UN around digital cooperation and what was the role of the IGF in all of that. So um, this has led also to one round, like one um, roadmap that fall that was that was made as a result of um, thematic and multi-stakeholder roundtables in a process that was led by the UN. And um, some of these discussions, one of the roundtables was also about um, 
possible improvements to the IGF regarding strengthening and also strategic improvements to this fora, because there, there has been some criticism and some discussions in the past year about how this space might be losing its relevance and everything else. So this was all part of the, the roadmap and, and, and related discussions. But when you look at the roadmap, um, we have the paragraph 93 that says um, that one of the goals, one of the ideas that were listed was the creation of a strategic and empowered multi-stakeholder high-level body, the MHLB, um, building on the experience of the existing multi-stakeholder advisory group, which is the MAG nowadays, which would address urgent issues, coordinate follow-up actions on forum discussions, and also relay some policy approaches and recommendations to make the IGF more propositive or more um, present in some of the policy rela related discussions. And in the same context, um, a few year, a few months ago or maybe years, I, I lost track of time in the past, <laughs> the past few years, but that was also a document um, by the co-champions that led um, the round table on the strengthening the IGF part of the, the, round, the digital cooperation discussion. The document that was called Options for the Future of Global Digital Cooperation they also listed that there was a significant demand for stronger digital cooperation and leadership with regards to internet governance. So that's when the multi-stakeholder high-level body and now the leadership panel all come in, as, a, as, as I was saying, as an attempt to make it all more relevant and maybe more present in some of the policy discussions. But when we started doing the debate around the, the MH, MHLB, there was also some points about how this group should work together with the MAG, the multi-stakeholder multi advisory group, and also how this should not be like um, clashing with the MAG's functions, how these two groups would actually function together. And the idea was like for this new group to never overcome or like represent any weakening of the, the already existing spacings and everything else. But like just to wrap up, um, last month, um, IGF um, Secretary in, in the UN as well, they both announced this call for um, the IGF leadership panel, which is kind of the, um, how everything is, is coming up to form, which, is in, which has invited um, international civil society, intergovernmental organizations, private sector, governments, and everyone to submit names of candidates from developed and developing countries um, to be part of this panel. And the idea is exactly as I was saying, like to have a more, a space that's with more relevant names to kind of um, help debate the IGF mission and everything else. And um, as you were saying, Emilia, like on the past few weeks, there has been a lot of discussions about what is this group? What are these people? Like, why do we need, why is there a need for like a new and high level body and whether or not um, it will represent that um, all of our efforts around multi-stakeholderism, around the IGF, they would um, instantly become top down because um, as part of the, the um, digital cooperation discussions, these were all, um, these, this is also a UN um, led effort, a UN led effort that's like mostly supported by member states. And this is, this is um, one of the main concerns. And just to um, finalize everything, I, yeah, so like the comments were about, yeah, this overlap between this um, leadership panel and the MAG. Also, why would it, we need to give way more space to, I don't know, private sector, social media companies, and maybe even some groups in civil society said that um, there was a concern about um, an uptake of all of our discussions and maybe um, we should, m like kind of a concern that um, this new leadership panel should introduce into the IGF space some imbalances um, in between private sector, civil society and everything else. So I guess, um, yeah, trying to sum up what is the the MHLB, the leadership panel, and the, the past discussions in a few minutes, that's kind of that, what I can say. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Bruna, for making a lot of interesting points, I think. And now I would like to pass the floor to uh, Juan, uh, who will, uh, who is, uh, who's been, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, who, uh, you have been uh, on the IG ecosystem 
uh, for several years. So if you could give us an overview of the youth participation in the IGF and the evol evolution of the youth-led initiatives. everyone. Uh, since I just started on being part of this ecosystem, I don't even know that, it, that I was part of, of, of internet governance. I, uh, during all these years, I've been seeing so many efforts of you people trying to get uh, a main and a common goal in different spaces. And sometimes these initiatives work and another doesn't so much and a few, any. The main characteristic of, for, from my point of view of those initiatives if, f, that have been successful is that they understood that even with some conflict of interest and overlapping of functions, what they want is to achieve, that they, what they want to achieve is a community, a community of diverse groups it's bigger and more important, not just to them, but also for the future of you as a one, as a one voice in the decision-making process, as a player among the rest of the stakeholders. The last description free for me fits really well with the process that I'm seeing right now in the uh, internet, in the IGA ecosystem. When I started, no, no, we different groups, organization, collectives, or young people that decide to join forces, I have constantly evaluation of the process and focus more on how they can contribute when in, when in come to policy making and using spaces as the NRIs with the U at regional, national, and local levels and coordinating between them positions that are being reflected in a global and local way. Being an example, all these efforts are an example that the bottom of a multi-stakeholderism model of internet governance can work if we are open enough uh, for everyone and we are open enough for diversity. But that's the situation right now, and that has been uh, uh, that has been because we are driven by the necessity of change or making a boy her something that we never forget because that was the fuel of the creation of the Yosemite. The you see the the you see the you standing group at some like years a boy we had a boy representing you in the IGF opening and closing ceremony. A track dedicated especially to us in the main in the main events of the IGF. There is a lot of work to do, we have to recognize that. But if we continue that way, in this way, we are going in the right direction. And we should continue joining forces from our nation, regions and globally, because that's the only way of stop being tokenized and start making decisions in the main environment where a lot of, of, of our lives are been living right now and probably will be for so many years. So if we keep quiet, we, we will be letting others to define our present and our future. And remember, we are everywhere, you people, we are everywhere, just in case we forget it and someone make us believe the opposite. Thank you, Juan. Uh, f now, Eileen, my question is for you. You have been on YCIG, Steering Committee, for two years now. So what can you tell us about the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance and the participation of youth in IGF work streams like the disease? Thank you very much, uh, Joao, and hi, everyone. Um, well, the Youth Coalition Internet Governance has been contributing 
actively in the dynamic coalitions ecosystem, starting from collaborating um, and support the statement on the core internet values, which was signed last year with other DCs. And we also um, collaborate, participating in webinars, and most importantly, engaging in the DC paper. Basically, this DC paper describes the story of the dynamic coalitions um, and also um, the achievements and the suggestions uh, for the future, uh, especially making a call of action for remembering the work done so far by the dynamic coalitions and how it could fit within the roadmap on digital cooperation and the multi-stakeholder high-level body. Um, I invite people to read the DC paper. Um, I also um, invite uh, everyone to check the report of the DC main session that took place yesterday. Going back to the Youth Coalition Intergovernance, we have been advocating for the voice of youth for now 11 years. Uh, yesterday, we were reflecting on our discussion during these years, and we got to the conclusion that youth is getting more attention and is highly involved in the ecosystem. Um, this year and last year, we have the opportunity to organize the Youth Summit with the support of the host country and several partners. Um, personally, I want to thank Emilia and the Youth IG of Poland Steering Committee members for trusting in us to contribute in the organization of such important event for youth. Um, how, uh, however, and this is something that we are still finding worrying, is that non-youth people still have doubts about youth participation and how we can contribute meaningfully. We see, we see, we still see tokenism, as uh, Juan was saying. Uh, we still share our messages and recommendations uh, to all the stakeholders, but for the other side, we are not seeing the, the response that we wish. Um, I, well, I can share briefly that uh, from the Youth Summit Working Group on Inclusive Internet Governance Ecosystem and Digital Cooperation, uh, for instance, we mentioned several recommendations to the IGF, like increasing the linkages between, between sorry, the NRIs and the youth NRIs, uh, considering youth as a stakeholder and bringing uh, voices from marginalized communities into the discussion of the IGF. Um, when we say youth as a stakeholder, we are not saying just to put a tick on a, um, on a list um, and just, I don't know, for example, giving uh, youth five minutes to speak at the panel. That's not we are, uh, what we are looking for. We are looking for equal participation and that uh, stakeholders uh, could see us as an agent of change uh, that we can participate in equal footing in decision policy making bodies. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, thank you for your interesting input. Uh, so, Emilia, we have been hearing and participating at the Youth Summit. Could you tell us a bit more about the planning and the points of action elaborated by the working groups? How is it connected to the roadmap of the digital cooperation and the UN Common Agenda? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Aileen and uh, Juan has alre have already mentioned uh, a few things about the Youth Summit, so I just would like to get you uh, a little bit uh, more details. So, uh, the Youth Summit, uh, the project Youth Summit, because we, we called it a project because it wasn't only the event we had this Monday, but also it was a whole process. So uh, it was uh, the idea of it was born from uh, last year's experiences. Uh, something that Aileen just mentioned that uh, postulates by youth are mm, maybe they are lis listened to, but we don't see much power, much effect that those postulates uh, were causing. So we thought about uh, the ways how we could change it, like how we can find a way to make those postulates more effective, like effective in the real life, so causing real, real changes, even the small ones. So hence the idea of having it in the form of the project, so preparing uh, those postulates in advance. Uh, we have been working in eight groups, uh, led by youth experts from 
a youth observatory and youth coalition on internet governance like Juan, uh, like Eileen, uh, who supported the groups, the group participants with their knowledge uh, and their experience in the field of the gov uh, internet governance. And each group uh, was uh, looking for the challenges in uh, uh, in one particular area of the internet governance. And uh, the final result of their work was points of action. And the idea of those points of action was that they uh, will include answers to three questions. So first one, what is the challenge in the particular field of the internet governance? The second one, what is the solution? So it's like, uh, like a classic postulate, but the, also the third part, to whom this point of action is targeted, like who could actually help in implementing that. So what we wanted, uh, why we wanted uh, to create such points of actions is that they could be directed to the very specific groups of people uh, or governments or companies or organizations. So uh, our really amazing uh, groups, because participants uh, are all very, very, very brilliant people, the same uh, with coordinators. So they prepared uh, points of action uh, and we have already presented them during the youth summit. Uh, I see that Aileen is uh, pasting some links in the chat. So uh, if you could Aileen also paste them the QR code uh, or the link to, to the uh, web page when you can uh, access the first version of points of action, the sneak peek into this work. Uh, but uh, soon we will publish the whole report with all the points of action with research that uh, stands uh, behind each of them. And also we would like to start targeting them, to delivering them to particular groups of people or politicians or organizations. And we just want uh, this idea to evolve, to be continued after the Youth Summit. Right now, I. Um, I can't tell in which way it would be uh, exactly, but uh, I really hope that more and more young people and initiatives will join us because we already are having conversations with initiatives like Youth Ex Policymakers or with Friends for Leadership, which are also the youth initiatives. And we just hope that if the more of us will be on board, the more perspectives we will get, the more voices we will be able to include, and maybe the more power we'll have. So yeah, so that's uh, that's from my side about the Youth Summit this year. Oh, uh, thank you, Emilia. Uh, thank you too, uh, Juan. With this speech, we will finish the first session of our our talk and let's go to the fun part of the session which is discussing on a shared document uh, about some policy questions so i will send the link to you uh, or or yeah one second i'll send the link in the the description so yes this youth position toward the present and the future of digital cooperation We'll, we'll gather op op opinions from the participants of the session and later thoughts from the partner youth initiatives like Youth SIG, Youth CIG. During the following weeks uh, of the IGF, the idea here is just to expand the impact and the products that we create here. So the document will be published in early 22 and will be widely spread through the IGF mailing list and other platforms. So the idea is that everyone can participate regardless they are on site or online. And for those who have connectivity issues, our online uh, me, uh, I will get your comments and 
try to show to the on-site public. Uh, so this, this document will have three sections. Uh, one, re about uh, what are the remaining challenges of uh, including people in the IGF process. We'll have also what roles should young people have in the development of MHLB initiative? So this is the second section. And the third section, we will talk about what are relevant stak stakeholders that can help us improve our participation and how can we influence them. So we invite everyone here uh, online and on-site participants to send comments, suggestions, and inputs to this document. So the panelists will go uh, to each section, one, two, and three. So please give me your contributions in that order. Remember that me, I'm going uh, that I will do this uh, connection with all people. Oh, okay, so w let's discuss about the first section. Uh, what are the remaining challenges of including in young people in the IGF process? Oh, Pedro wants to talk, please uh, introduce yourself. Yeah, just to make a small comment, uh, Pedro Lana for the record from the Youth Observatory. Um, I believe that one of the main problems that we have today to include youth is, and that we actually don't talk about that uh, that much, is reaching new audiences. Uh, meaning that usually uh, the people that are included in internet governance ecosystems are already part of some institution, some organization uh, that already has this contact, for example. Uh, in Brazil, it's really concentrated in some uh, states or in some universities. Uh, uh, some study, group, study groups, and I have also noticed that in other places, uh, in European countries, in Asian countries, it is also really concentrated in the same spots, so it gets kind of a place where everyone already knows everyone, and uh, the new people that come in are part of these groups that are already included, and it's something a little bit hard to do, to get to these new places, to these uh, new groups, but it's something important to make diversify, not just uh, regionally, not just when we're talking about things uh, like gender and these things, but also getting out of our tra more traditional uh, spaces that we already r reach normally. Okay, thank you, Pedro, for your inputs. Now I am seeing here that Nicholas is uh, adding some comments to our document. Hello everybody, Nicolas Fimarelli from UTICF Uruguay. Well, I, I think that uh, in order to 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 have uh, what are the challenges for include more people, more young people in these processes, I think uh, Pedro stated very well. The issue is that there are people that are uh, out of these processes, or maybe they they are not uh, uh, they have not knowledge about that these processes exist, right? There are like uh, these multi-stakeholder processes happening when everyone has <coughs> a voice and every voice counts. Uh, no, not uh, every time uh, people knows that, but Internet Governance Forum is a place where uh, all all these voices will be heard for for these people that do the decision making processes. So it's very important that we create uh, more online platforms, like for example, software based uh, platforms for people that cannot participate maybe on site or <coughs> have not like sufficient internet connection, for example, to join a Zoom meeting. They could uh, also 
participate by a documents drafting as we are doing already today. Uh, but we need to share this uh, more uh, diversely, like in social networks, we need to reach uh, other spaces. Also mar marginalized communities, like in rural areas, we could prepare some temporary internet hubs there, <coughs> providing some satellite internet or something for, for a period of time. So these people, they, for example, the unconnected one, could participate because the something that uh, always happened is that we, we talk a lot about the unconnected, but we are the, un the connected one. So we need to, to raise more voices. And also something uh, I was thinking in the last ICFs was to include, for example, uh, people with disabilities, right? Maybe blind people. So we, we could have like different uh, groups of youth people. For example, I don't know, <laughs> uh, some school of blind people in, in in a country could also have their own youth initiative which, because they will have uh, some opinions and some recommendations for the future of, of their internet that maybe has a difference in the way the, uh, that they communicate, no? But at the end, we need to have this inclusivity of all the people. So I think we need to reach more spaces. That could be my opinion. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Nicolas. Yeah, I... Your input is very valued because when we think about the internet, we think from our, our perspective, right? So bringing marginalized groups and bringing uh, people that are not usually being heard, it's uh, very important, very essential to us to understand what are their problems and work on it together. For me, one of the main remaining challenges is to be more included in the decision-making process, not only as a consultant person or someone that just heard their opinion, but also that some that being the ones that take the decisions is for me that it's the main goal that we should go and we should try to achieve. For me, that's what we have to do in the future. And also, what, what Nicolas says about the inclusivity, thinking in the way of the, um, oh, like this, uh, testing, testing these new technologies to be more adaptable to sort kind of people, actually it's a great idea. Oh, because we are developing like new technologies and new ways and new policies without thinking in 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 thinking and including really the people that we think they need to be included. Uh, thank you, Juan. I I am seeing that our brainstorm in the document is becoming very extense, so thank you all for participating. Uh, it would be nice if we skip to section two, just to gather some ideas around the subject, because our we are running out of this time, but re please remember that we will continue working on this document for the the next few days. Uh, so let's remember about what is section two. What roles should young people have in the development of the MHLB initiative? OK, I'm going to say something about this. Uh, the M the multi-stakeholder high-level panel. Uh, it's a play where they didn't include any policy related to young people. They are pretty much going to transmit some 
the resource from the IGF to the government, but they don't mention in any part of the document young people. So uh, if you ask me, uh, we have to start with that to to in, to include in the in the objectives of the M, uh, the multi multi stakeholder high level panel uh, young people. Oh, okay. Thank you, Juan. Uh, Nicolas, are you are going to talk. Please go ahead. Yes, Nicolas Fimarelli for the recording. So about the roles that the young people have in the in the MHLB or could have, I think that well, as the structure of the MHLB is to advise the like the Secretary General in the urgent issues that the IGF has, like coordinating follow up actions. So I think that uh, we, the enormous work that the work the youth has already done, I think we would need to be like considered uh, another stakeholder in this uh, level body because this this could be like the bridge between the IGF discussions and outcomes and all the things that is happening also in the best practice forums and the dynamic coalitions and other relevant bodies. And well, uh, as one of the key functions of this uh, level body will be to receive uh, the, the reports from the MAG and then to promote to the IGF in, 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 order in, in the way of outcomes, I think that the, we, we, the youth would need to be like uh, the stakeholder that be more engaged in these processes, I think. Uh, in another sense, I think that uh, the youth has a, a role that is to communicate these outcomes also for the, for the broader community, like in social networks, as I said before in my comments. So we, we need to, to go broader, like to the wider community, and try to reach uh, all the youth initiatives uh, with these outcomes so they could uh, read what the outcomes were So in, in all this full process and then contribute, uh, like, uh, how to say, like in a retro thing, right? So at the end, we, we will be constructing the future of, of the decision making and, and the actions, the follow up in actions that will happen uh, from, from every part of the world. That could be uh, my, my recommendation for the MHLB. Oh, thank you, Nicolas. Uh, you, you, I completely agree with you and that and you know everybody that worked or participated at fora that don't have this kind of initiative you you feel the lack of participation from other groups you you feel that there is too restrictive and when we work with this kind of high level bo bodies you bring people together you say like, oh, we have these youth and we need to integrate them to renovate the ideas, to bring new perspectives. So yes, I totally think that we can do a lot with this kind of initiative. Oh, okay. Uh, Juliana is coming to speak. Please go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I am Juliana, just for the record. Uh, well, uh, what I wanted to know is uh, how, from Emilia's perspective, how easy was it to interact with the, the government and receive support to organize an event such as the Youth Summit and in general from the other panelists as well? Uh, what do you think are the challenges and the opportunities that you have when uh, coming to ask ask for support from external uh, entities, uh, either their governments or uh, companies, or yeah? Please, Emilia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Th uh, thank you for the question. Uh, so mm, in this year, uh, I can say that we were lucky and unlucky at the same time. Uh, we are lucky because uh, we, the initiative the, of the Project Youth Summit uh, was very much supported by the IGF uh, Secretariat and also at the same time by the host country. Um, like They were interested in what we are doing and at the same time they uh, didn't really interrupt us, like they 
didn't try to impose uh, their ideas, which was actually quite good because we are the young people. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we are also unlucky at the same time uh, because when it came to the private companies, for example, uh, they were uh, not very eager to invest uh, in this year's youth summit um, because they just uh, they thought that it won't happen. And uh, not at least in the physical form. So, uh, for example, we plan to bring much more people here. And firstly, everybody was very enthusiastic. We had some propositions of funding, but then people started to, uh, like the company started to withdraw because they just thought that those, those people wouldn't make it to Poland anyway because of COVID and restrictions. But uh, what uh, I can say, and I think it will be uh, answering more the third question, actually, uh, is what I think who could, could support uh, young people uh, is private sector. Like, I think this is a very uh, underexploded area of potential cooperations. First of all, because private sector is the money, the money is power, is influence. So if we want to, if we want to have the very, very, very strong backup, I think that private sector is a perfect place. The big companies like Google, like EY, like PwC, different kind of companies because a lot of them, maybe they are not a very technological companies, but they have something in common with that. Uh, they could be a great partners because, you know, there's also a lot of them are just, there are people there who are just enthusiastic about helping out young people. Like, for example, we have had a very great cooperation with PwC for some time and they were just very, very supportive. So I think that uh, if we are looking for some supporters, of course, uh, the different kind of organizations, uh, public and non-public, like, for example, NASC, which uh, was also a great supporter for us. They were absolutely amazing, and I think that Youth Summit wouldn't happen without their help. But also, these private companies is what I, when I, where I would look for support and help. Oh, thank you, Emilia. Yeah. Uh the core of the IGF is about multi-stakeholderism. So it's very important the input you are bringing to us because this uh, joint effort that, make, that made this event happen every time. So uh, thank you for your inputs and, and explaining what, and what, what's, what were the difficulties you had this year but here you are in near the end of the event and everything went perfect. All the sessions, everything. So we, with that in mind, we know that this mood stakeholder process works and we are trying to improve it, bringing the youth perspective. Okay, so the, I would like to Pass for to the session three about what are the relevant stakeholders that can help us improve our participation and how can we influence them? Oh, so uh, I saw that someone already added some text here, so I will uh, say th uh, the ideas that appeared here. Um, okay, so like applying funding to programs like the Internet Society Foundation uh, for youth to be able to participate in the IGF process during the whole year, the, the whole year, as you said, Emilia, in the last, uh, the last your last talk about the difficulties of that the the lack of funding in the in the uh like uh, so near to the ev event you had a lot of trouble to reschedule and plan the event but 
So maybe uh, if we work together to a joint and long, uh, long-term uh, cooperation process, this could diminish this kind of instability that usually tend to happen. Oh, there another uh, suggestion here is about the mentorship programs or similar activities that allow us to co to get connections with high level representatives because it doesn't matter if we talk about the, the subject but doesn't uh, pass beyond our circle this information so it's very important that we could reach other stakeholders with our work like uh, representatives of organizations like the UN, ITU, and so on. And of course, we need to work closely with the private sector because they are maintaining the internet as we know, and they have a lot to contribute. Uh, I see that uh, Nicholas wants to talk, so please go ahead. Yes. Uh, I, I think that some relevant stakeholders that already uh, could be very necessary to talk to them are, well, when we return to our local communities, we, well, uh, for example, in Latin America, the, the, there are some countries uh, from the OEA that has their open national government plans. And at these open national government plans, you, you have the opportunity to propose things like digital citizenship, uh, things about transparency. So I think uh, those places could be nice to uh, to reach the the, the authorities the, and say, well, uh, we are a, a group of young people involved in internet governance. Maybe you could uh, state like projects uh, in your country with the help of the government. I think th this could be a strategic thing for the open government plans in, in, in the different places. I don't know how these uh, plans or, or communication with the government uh, are doing uh, like in, in the different regions, but in Latin America, I think it's a nice opportunity to engage more with, with government. So maybe them could help uh, in, in the sense of organizing some more meetings, more creating a wider local community. So that are some ideas that could help uh, uh, talking about the government stakeholder, right? Thank you so much. Oh, uh, thank you for your inputs. Uh, what? Sorry, what? Oh, Nadia raised the hand. Okay, so please uh, go ahead. Hello? Yes. We can okay, begin. thank you. Hi, my name is Nadia Czechia and um, from the European Dialogue on Internet Governance, or Eurodic. And uh, I actually wanted to take the discussion from the other side. We are a uh, Eurodic organizes the Youth Dialogue on Internet Governance every year. And one uh, component that's extremely important to us, which I also think was something that you try to, uh, you know, try to address with the section one, is um, an important thing for us is to empower young people through skill building. So it's also something that was reflected in the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance meeting um, um, beforehand, uh, I think that was yesterday, um, where, we, where there was, it was said that um, making sure that young people have the right skills to be able to sit at the table, things like negotiations, things like public speaking, uh, giving them, therefore, the opportunity to bring forward the points that are important so they don't get obfuscated by things that, um, that people are fearful about. And this is one thing that Eurodic tries to aim to do. And we are always working together with young people. And every year, um, our uh, programming committee changes with new young people from previous years to keep bringing this input in. And this is also what, um, what I hope to see um, at different levels that we are continuously also engaging with each other. So we're always talking, or a lot of the discussions were about um, engaging other people, but I also think that it's important to remember how we can foster uh, the ideas uh, among each other, not just about how we can reach out to others, but what kind of skills do we have 
among each other to be able to reach the goals that we want to achieve, whether that is bringing a point across that is so important to you or to your community, whether or not it is finding a, a position with a job, for example, getting the support that you need to be able to participate in events like this. A few years ago, um, um, when I was part of the Youth Coalition and Internet Governance, um, I supported 35 people with their visa application uh, and only one was able to get to the IGF in the end. And that is a really, that's really poor. I think that we could do better, not only in the amount of people that we can support with their visa applications or uh, with, um, you know, documents that they need to access places like this. I think building that type of community among each other allows us to support each other. And then I also wanted to comment on the mentorship. Uh, I really love mentorship programs and I think this is a really great way of engagement. My only concern is when I think of mentorship programs, the, the concept of mentor in itself is a trusted advisor. It's someone that you build a connection with, someone that, you, um, that, you, that understands you, someone that's looking out for you. And over time, I've had people um, in, within the Internet Governance Forum that looked out for me, like telling me, oh, this is a great session. I really think that suits your skill set or that you might find it interesting or you're going to learn a lot from, from this speaker. And I think that um, if we focus too much on the type of people that we want, we might forget about uh, the connections or the, the interest in you. So if we think about mentorships program and thinking about what we can get out of them, then forgetting, then sometimes we forget a little bit about ourselves too, about things that we cannot see for ourselves. But mentors can be younger and older. I have a lot of uh, people at Eurodig who are a lot younger than me that tell me about a lot of unique opportunities that are happening that I should get involved in or learn more about. And I think that is so, uh, such a great opportunity to, to make sure that we bring that information out there. So it's not limited just from, from the top down because then we might as well all sit in a webinar and all get the same information. We can connect each other. We're all living in different parts of the world. We're all connected on different levels and fronts. Any little bit of information that I can give you, I am always help uh, willing and I'm always prepared to put you in touch with the people that you know can try to make your life a little bit easier. So I hope that you also share that sentiment that when you see that not only for like um, for yourself but also for other people, you do that too. I think you two should be connected. And I've also had that many times at the IGF that people came up to me and they said, hey, um, this is someone who was talking about the same topic. Maybe you should talk a little, and that's great. And I think that um, together as, um, and then growing from, from this sentiment, we, we keep getting a youth that is stronger and stronger and willing to uh, connect with each other and willing to overcome kind of that fear of the other that we sometimes seem to have when we talk about America, Europe, China, Latin America, this fear of who is who, that among us, if we can find this camaraderie, we can solve a lot of problems as well, just by being supportive. Thank you. Oh, thank you, uh, Nadia. I, you brought some interesting points to us. Uh, actually, I believe that the ideas we build here should not be self con to be contained just in an event that happens one once a year so it's very important that we can grab our ideas from here and uh, and apply to during the whole internet governance process i uh, i would like to thank you all for participating at the session i think we discussed about the MHLB, we, we also uh, did a, a actually pretty interesting brainstorm work here in the document. I really appreciate, so please uh, let's applaud our, applause our panelists.